Welcome to APM Training by Wisdom Trainings. Now the next thing, how to install the ADT plugin for Eclipse. Uh, why? What is this plugin and why is this required? Okay, I'll just answer that. Right, first of all, you have to download Eclipse. Okay, most of you must be having Eclipse. Okay, in case you don't have it, it's the editor for Java language. Right, you can click on this link and download the 64-bit version and install it. Sometimes while starting Eclipse, people get an error. Okay, to resolve that error, what you need to do is that uh, whatever, like wherever is the path of your Eclipse. Fine, when you start Eclipse, okay, if I start my Eclipse, which is over here, right, it will start. Okay, but if in case you get error, then you go to the location. Fine, a location where Eclipse is present on your machine. And there would be a INI file, okay, a configuration file. I edit it and inside it, give this line hyphen VM. Okay, there is jvm.dll which is present somewhere in JDK at this path, JRE bin server jvm.dll. You need to give the path of jvm.dll. In case you get the error, if you don't get the error, then it's fine. Eclipse is started and I will just make a workspace appium uh, workspace all right fine now uh, there is a plugin for Android inside Eclipse okay you can install a plugin for Android it is known as the ADT plugin right Android development toolkit right uh, with the with that plugin android gets installed as as a plugin inside eclipse fine and uh, for example most of you must have worked with testng testng is a plugin inside eclipse so there are different plugins one of them is adt to work with selenium you need to install uh, this adt plugin fine so uh, hold on this is eclipse which is starting Fine, and this is the welcome screen. I'll just close the welcome screen right now. You see, I am getting an error failed to get required ADT because I have the plugin installed. Because of this plugin, I'm getting a warning, not an error. So, this means that I have the plugin installed. You will also get this kind of error once you install it, right? So, uh, you go to help and install new software. Okay, over there, you have to give the link for ADT plugin which is this link okay just give this link over here and you will get the developer tools select that click on next 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 and it you will be able to install it Eclipse will also restart if some warning or error comes in between just ignore it and continue okay right so uh, once you have this plugin fine you can go to Windows uh, preferences right after you install it you go to windows preferences and you will get the android option over here okay update the sdk location out here okay the same sdk location which was there inside android studio right okay the same location you need to update over here you need to tell eclipse where the sdk is lying fine so uh, the adt plugin will help us Okay, how will it help us? That will be clear in the coming modules to detect the phone and all whether the phone is detected. It will tell you that. Alright, fine. Now, moving ahead, the next thing is, yeah, set the path, yes. Eclipse warning, yes. So, uh, once you restart the Eclipse after ADT installation, you will get the warning message like I got. And if you get that, that means ADT has been successfully installed. Okay, now uh, installing Node.js and .NET Framework is important for Appium. Alright, so you just have to install both of them. It's very easy. You just need to go to Google and type uh, download Node.js. Okay, and you can go to download Node.js link and download the 64-bit version. Okay, install the exe. Right and after that install the dotnet framework 
fine so just go to google and type download .NET framework okay most of the times in windows 10 it is installed but still right you can go for the latest one and install the exe okay download and install the exe all right so you have done major majority of the installations right now you have to take care of your phone you have to come to the phone now uh, after all these installations and all android .NET framework node.js i would suggest that just restart your pc once okay just uh, you can uh, restart the pc and come to the website qtpcrain.com and continue with the video the reason being that uh, you know it's a little safe although it's not required but sometimes you know it might uh, you know do something to, uh, to to settle the installations okay once a while i was stuck and when i restarted it worked okay so just restart if in in, in case you haven't right now after that you have to enable the developer mode in the phone now what is developer mode okay this means that you will act as a developer okay uh, what you need to do is that uh, this is my phone okay hold on i need to connect it i'm sorry just a minute i'm using the mirror software which helps my the content of my phone app mirror uh, to be visible on this screen right now for enabling the developer mode you have to go to the settings and go to about phone okay and uh, you will have something known as build version fine tap on the build version seven times and at the bottom somewhere over here at the bottom you will get the message you are a developer okay after tapping on the build number seven times you will be getting the message that you are a developer so you have to enable the developer mode on the phone okay right and after that you have to enable the usb debugging in phone this is very important okay so what you do is that you go to the settings again okay one thing yeah you go to the settings again and i'll just search for oh, oh sorry just a minute yeah i'll just search for developer oh sorry debugging i'm sorry usb debugging okay Uh, you switch on this option usb debugging okay right it's very important and one more thing you know when apm scripts run and you know uh, when they run for say 5 minutes or 6 minutes on the phone the phone sleeps and you don't want the phone to sleep so you can enable this option stay awake okay when the phone is charging so this won't block your phone when it is charging okay so uh, because you have to right now my phone is connected it's charging so it won't lock the phone when the scripts are running okay right now after this making sure phone is detected in eclipse ddms okay uh, you open eclipse and in eclipse you will see that there is a small icon over here okay you click on this icon and you will see ddms option all right you select this ddms option and this is this should come up this is my phone it is being detected now all right and if you go to platform tools and you give the command adb what if it is not detected i will tell you hold on adb devices see list of android is also able to detect the phone okay this is the device id known as udid okay 
Now make sure that your phone drivers are installed. All right. In in the in the Android Studio. Okay. I had installed this uh, USB Google USB driver. Because of this, most of the phones would be detected by your PC. But if it is not, like my phone, OnePlus 7T, was not detected. So I had to install the USB drivers of my phone. Alright. The drivers were provided by the manufacturer. Okay, when I connected the phone, I got the option for the driver EXE. So you have to make sure that whosoever is the provider, you search on the Google. Or mostly when you connect the phone to the PC the drivers you are you are able to see the drivers i'll just reconnect my phone hold on when i reconnect the phone okay just a minute hold on see this uh, in the settings there is again a very important setting known as you just type USB and USB preferences okay you say that I am no instead of no data transfer you select the complete thing file transfer okay when you do this see my phone has come up now okay right and in the in form of e drive and i got the drivers over here for my phone so i had to install these drivers okay so you have to enable the file transfer mode and then only you will get this right now if you have installed this driver then after this your phone shall be detected okay in adb devices this is the best thing okay right in Eclipse also it is being detected my Android had restarted actually okay right now once this is done okay once this is done you have to move ahead with the next thing okay enabling the file transfer and phone finding the UDID of the device okay I just told you in ADB devices command you can find the UDID this is the unique ID of the device alright and extracting APK of any Android application now this is important okay when you're working with the uh, Appium when you have to make an, an application automate or you have to automate an application uh, using Appium then you have to have the APK file for that application Alright, now uh, what do you mean by APK file? Uh, like in Windows we have EXE file, right? Okay, similarly in Android we have the APK file. APK file is equivalent to EXE. Every app, every app has an APK file. Alright, now you need to extract that APK file. Right, to extract the APK you need to uh, again go to the app store okay the play store okay and search for apk extractor all right you i installed this the first one the first application apk extractor right i have it installed this is the APK extractor right with it with it you can extract the APK for any app for example I will search for the app make my trip it's a make, make my trip the second one it is a, a travel app okay it's it deals in travel traveling okay book hotel booking and all it's a very famous app in India and you can take up any app okay and you can just click on it double click at the bottom you will get the message that APK has been extracted okay and then you go to 
your phone this is my phone okay and over here in internal store storage you will get the extracted apk's holder where you will get the apk this is the apk for make my trip okay so th this way you can extract the apk for any particular application which will be required in selenium fine okay now after this the installation of apm starts once you have done all this you know how to extract apk your phone is detected this is the major thing okay this step over here is the major thing that your phone has to be detected now comes the apm part how to download the apm configure it write the code and all various configurations okay right so that will be done in the next part we will download and install apm okay